have it going. Okay, so Cheyenne asked me what would be a good shoulder routine for bodybuilders to really get those delts to pop. There's a shoulder pre-exhaustion cycle that I'm going to show them. I didn't invent it. Arthur Jones and Ellington Dart, the guys who invented high intensity training and the Nautilus machines, really came up with this idea. Or at least I got the idea from them. They may have got it from somebody else. But in any event, it's a really killer routine that I like to use in other instances, but it's great for the shoulders too. So basically, a pre-exhaustion cycle is doing three exercises in a row with no rest in between those exercises. And the combination of those three exercises are like this. One's going to be a compound motion. Then it's going to be followed by an isolation motion. And then followed by another compound motion. Now here's the theory behind it. When you're doing a compound motion, you're working more than one muscle group. So as an example, if you're doing chest press, it's the triceps and the chest that are creating that motion because there's rotation happening around both the elbow and the shoulder joint. And in theory, when you get to fatigue, deep into fatigue on a compound motion set, it's because the smaller muscle group gives out before the larger muscle groups. In that case, the triceps will give out before the chest does. The chest has more power. So, the theory is if you do a compound isolation compound, you'll make the chest work harder in that case and allow the triceps to rest. As an example, you do the dumbbell press to failure, and then immediately followed by a set of cable flies where the triceps don't have to work, but the chest does and then immediately go back to another set of dumbbell presses. The triceps are fresh, the chest has to work even harder still. So we're going to do that same concept with shoulders. I'm going to have Cheyenne do an overhead press to failure, then I'm going to have him immediately go to a lateral raise to failure, and then once again back to overhead press to failure. No rest in between those sets. Now on the third set, I'm going to have him do a lot lighter weight than his first set because he should be pretty cooked. So on that third set, He's going to be doing 35 pounds. On the first set, he's going to be doing 60 pounds. And then for the lateral raises, probably 15 pounds. That's what we're going to try today. So, I'm going to set it up. 60 pounds, right? For the overheads? I hope. We're going to find out. That's a lot. It's a lot. I don't do 60 pound overheads. So, let me set it up before you get started. Okay, so here's how it's going to look. You're going to stand with these, slight bend in the knees, shoulders squared back, and you stay tight with the form. Overhead presses. Until you can't anymore, and I'm going to help you through that final repetition. When you're done, tuck them, set them down, then you're going to step back here, grab these, Come in this position here, lean a little bit forward, do lateral raises from here to here and the back to here. Don't bring them down to here or to here because the shoulders get a chance to rest. This is it. This is the only range of motion I want, okay? Then when you're done with that, we're going to slap it to 35s. You're going to lift them up and overhead and press again, okay? Begin! Go ahead and stand here. All right. All right, let's see it, slow and controlled. All right, stay tight. There you go, that's good, that's good. Good. Good, good. All right, go ahead and set them down. Lateral raises, right now. Perfect. Now bring them up right there, back down to here. That's it. Not that, not too low. Go right there. Now back up. Okay. Slow and controlled. Good. Don't speed it up. Good. Keep going. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You got four more. Arm straighter. Arm straighter. Arm straighter. Come on. I'll help you out. Arm straighter. Arm straighter. Keep them straight. Now go. Don't jerk. One more. Smooth, smooth, smooth. Hold, hold for five. Hold. One, two, three, four, five. Down slowly. All right, set it down. 
Now we're going to do overhead presses. But you're looking pretty cooked. <laughs> one more lower. No, one more. One more lower. Almost. <sighs> Lucky you got a little bit of a break. Now go. <laughs> Same? Same. As many as you can with slow and controlled form. There you go. That's it. Good. Keep it smooth. Keep it smooth. I'll help you through. Oh. Keep that tension. Go. Good. Come on, come on, come on. Excellent. You have two more. Don't quit. Stay tight. Go. Push. One more. Slowly. That's it. Slowly, now down slowly, 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 good. Touch and send down. Uh, there you go. So let me explain a little bit about why I did what I did. 60 pounds to failure, he did five repetitions, failed on the sixth, which is about actually what I was expecting. He really should be doing those with 50s. 50s. Yes. He went too heavy. <laughs> <laughs> then I had him do lateral raises with 15 pounds, which was about the right weight. Now, the reason why I had him hold for five seconds at the end of that is because he started cheating too much on his form when he got close to failure. I wanted to get a proper inroad. He was shying away from that, so I really made it hard on him on that final repetition. Now, if he kept his arms out wide and took the set to complete failure with me helping him through that final one or two repetitions, I would have let it go at that. But he did not. He ignored me. I had to make it harder on him. Then we went right back to overhead presses. We did with 25 pounds. I originally was planning 35, but he was already looking pretty cooked after the two sets. So I dropped it to 25 pounds, and that was about right. He did, what, 10, 11 repetitions before fatigue, and he did that one with good form. He got a decent inroad on his shoulders today. Three sets, that's all he needs. That was brutal. <laughs>